Friends, now we are going to learn a very, very important chapter, Partnership Accounts. Accounts. For a partnership, how to prepare the accounts? See, accounts of partnership is not anything different from other entities. You are carrying on a business, you are going to do accounting as per double entry system, no doubt. Accounting has to be done as per double entry system. That means what? For every debit, there should be an equal and a corresponding credit. You follow that principle. Double entry system should be followed. Which method you have to follow? Accrual or cash method? Accrual or cash method. At the option of the partners, understand, a company cannot follow cash method of accounting. They have to follow accrual method only. All incomes for the year, whether it is received or not, if it is earned, it should be recognized. All expense, paid or payable, if it is incurred, should be recognized. Accrual method. You might remember, we learned the accrual concept. Whereas cash method, is based on actual receipts and payments. If you receive cash, you record. If you pay cash, you record. That is cash method. So cash method will not take into consideration receivables and payables. Which method a partnership should follow for its accounting purpose? Generally, a partnership follows accrual method, generally. But a partnership can follow cash method also. It is their option. There is no condition. They have to follow accrual only. Generally, partnership follows accrual. But if the partners desire, they can follow cash method also, their option. But accounting is normally done under double entry system. So proper books of accounts should be maintained under double entry system. Accrual or cash method. Of course, at the end of every year you have to prepare a trial balance from the ledger balances and from that you have to prepare the trading final accounts from the trial balance you have to prepare the final accounts involving trading account Profit and loss account and then balance sheet, but between P and L and balance sheet, we have to prepare one very important account known as profit and loss appropriation account. This is very peculiar and specific for a partnership. So let me write it even bold way. Profit and loss appropriation In the case of a proprietorship, we prepare Trading p and balance sheet. Suppose it's manufacturing entity, we prepare manufacturing account, trading account, p and account balance sheet. But if it is a partnership firm, we have to prepare number one, trading account. Then p and account. The p and account will tell you what is a profit or loss made. After that, before preparing the balance sheet, the partnership should prepare another important account known as profit and loss appropriation account. What is this account? Why we have to prepare this? See, in a proprietary concern, whatever the profit or loss made is available to the proprietor, sole proprietor. He will have to bear the losses. He will have to enjoy the profits fully. 
whereas in case of a partnership the profit or loss is available to two or more persons how do you distribute the profit in various forms that has to be shown clearly in the form of a profit and loss appropriation account therefore in case of a partnership first of course you maintain books of account double entry system accrual or cash method end of the year you prepare the trial balance then from that final accounts comprising of trading account profit and loss account and profit and loss appropriation account then we prepare the balance sheet so this is a very very important point we have to remember okay now what do we show in the pnl appropriation account that's what we are going to learn now first of all what is pnl appropriation account it is an account showing distribution of profits among partners how the profits of a firm is distributed among the partners that will be shown in an account called profit and loss appropriation account friends you know in a partnership based on the partnership deed a partner may be entitled to salary for the service rendered by that person for the capital invested by the partner he may be entitled to interest on capital suppose he draws any money from the business based on the drawing made by him he is liable to pay interest on drawings to the firm all these shall be paid out of the profits of the firm understand carefully see when you prepare the pnl account all expenses are debited all losses are debited provided they are charged against profits what is the meaning of charge against profits whether the firm makes profit or loss whether the business makes profit or loss certain expenses have to be incurred for example you have to pay interest to the banker you have taken loan from a bank you have to pay interest can you go and tell the banker sir this year we did not make profit we cannot pay interest can you say that you can't say that because as far as the banker is concerned he has provided the money you are bound to pay interest whether your firm has made a profit or not it is a charge against profit similarly can a business tell their employees this year the profit is less we'll pay you less salary no salary is not based on the profits of the firm salary is based on the services rendered by the part by the employees it is normal monthly basis whether the firm makes a profit or not you have to pay salary suppose rent for office building you have to pay can you tell the landlord or the building owner so this year we made less of profit why don't you reduce the building rent you can't say that if if the building owner accepts it then in a year in which you make more profit you lost for more rent which you are not ready so there are certain expenses which you have to incur notwithstanding whether the business has made a profit or loss even in case of loss or whether you make less or more profit certain expenses have to be incurred they are known as charge against profit rent salary administration quality business promotion traveling conveyance telephone you know like that all these expenses are to be incurred notwithstanding whether the firm makes a profit or not 
these are known as charge against profit where any expenses a charge against profit or losses a charge against profit we have to put it in the profit and loss account debit whereas certain items of expenses or income shall be routed through the appropriation account only what is the meaning of appropriation if there is something you take something out of that we call it as appropriation you understand so if there is a full can of water you drink half of that you are appropriating the water for your purpose if the what if the can is empty you can't drink any water so there is no way you can appropriate something when there is nothing or able to understand if you have money in your pocket you can use it to go to hotel or a mall but no money in the pocket you can't spend it are able to understand whereas some expense will have to be incurred loan you have to repay you can't tell the banker sir i don't have money i can't repay the loan you have to pay interest you have to pay rent you have to pay so what about salary payable to a partner can a partner insist on salary even though the firm does not make a profit an employee does not get any share of profit he renders service for that he is asking for a salary that's all his salary is not based on profits of the business there is a partner or an investor salary for a partner shall be paid only if it is mentioned in the deed not only that only when the firm makes a profit so if any expense is to be incurred based on the availability of profit we call that as appropriation you understand for example you have profit in a box suppose this is the box which has a profit from that profit you can pay salary you can pay interest on capital to the partners if the profit is zero or it is negative salary cannot be paid so out of the total profits of the firm some portion may be paid as salary to partners some portion may be allowed as interest on capital balance if any a part of that may be saved for future purposes as a reserve for example salary profit is 50 lakhs profit is 50 lakhs you can pay salary to partners 30 lakhs you can pay interest on capital 10 lakhs balance 10 lakh you can take 5 lakhs to reserves still 5 lakh remains no that only is shared by the partners as profit sharing ratio so therefore how the total profit is distributed to the partners where salary and interest on capital are appropriation of profits to show that how the profit is distributed we have to prepare an account call profit and loss appropriation account how do you prepare that very simple you write profit and loss appropriation account for the year ended like that you can write suppose the agreement says you have to pay salary to partner you have to pay interest on capital to partner first thing you have to see is whether the firm has made a profit that means first you prepare the trading account gross profit transfer to pnl net profit don't transfer to capital transfer to pnl appropriation account on the credit of the appropriation by net profit this is from the 
profit and loss account. I told the profit is 50, 50 lakhs. Okay. Now the deed, deed provides salary of 30 lakhs. Assuming there are three partners, each is given 10 lakhs. That is what the deed says. So you are taking 30 out of the profit, which will be debited in the appropriation account to partner's salary. X 10, Y 10, Z 10, total 30. <coughs> the deed also provides for interest on capital. 10 lakhs. There are three partners. So, two interest on capital that also taken from profit x 5 y 3 z 2 because it is based on the capital invested by them. Suppose x has invested 5 lakhs, sorry 50 lakhs, y invested 30 lakhs, z invested 20 lakh and the rate is 10 percent. So, x will get interest of 5 lakh y 3 lakh z 2 lakhs total 10 lakhs out of 50 lakhs 30 goes for partner salary 10 for interest on capital still 10 more lakh is there you can take a portion of that to reserve general reserve 5 general reserve 5 now what is the balance of profit available 5 lakh is available that 5 lakh only will be distributed to partners as profit share. In what ratio? As per the agreement. Suppose profit sharing ratio is 2 is to 2 is to 1. Suppose it is given in the question. Available profit is 5 lakh. So you will transfer to x 2 lakhs to y 2 lakhs set 1 lakh that is how the 5 lakh will be transferred to the partners. So an account where you show how the profits of the business are appropriated for various purposes out of 50, 30 given for salary, 10 for interest, 5 for reserve, remaining 5 distribute based on the profit sharing proportion. In this account we show everything is it not? This account is known as profit and loss appropriation account and this is how we have to prepare the profit and loss appropriation account. But remember friends, salary or interest can be paid allowed only when it is mentioned in the partnership deed. So first you have to see whether the deed mentions that. If it mentions that, next thing you have to see whether there is a profit. <coughs> Two things. See it is like, suppose you have an ATM card. Can you go and draw money from the ATM machine? Yes, provided you have money in the bank. In your account, money should be there. So, ATM card is like the partnership deed where you are given the authority to draw money. But unless you have balance in your account, you can't draw the money. So, therefore, whether a salary or interest can be paid to partners or not depends upon two conditions. One is it should be mentioned in the partnership date. Two, profit should be available. Suppose it is mentioned in the deed, but the firm made a loss, you cannot pay salary or interest. Suppose deed doesn't mention, but profit is there, you cannot pay salary or interest. So both the condition, deed also should mention, profit also should be there, then only partner salary is allowed, interest on capital is allowed. Suppose there is interest on drawing, only one condition, see whether it is as per the deed. If interest on drawing can be charged, then that is an income to the firm, you have to credit it to the pre endal appropriation. I, didn't, I have not put it here. Interest on capital is expenditure for the firm, income for the partner. So we are debiting the appropriation account. On the contrary, Interest on drawing is an income to the partner, income to the firm and expense to the partner. So we have to debit the partner's account and credit the 
pay and an appropriation if it is given in that deed. So for interest on drawing, only one condition, C is it mentioned in the partnership agreement. If yes, then you can charge, you have to credit the P&L appropriation account. Whereas for salary and interest on capital, two conditions, number one, it is mentioned in the deed, number two, a profit is available. Then only salary and interest can be paid. But what about reserve? Reserve is your option, whether you want to transfer reserve or not, the partners can decide. After transfer reserve, whatever the balance is the profit available to the partners, that will be shared among the partners in the ratio as given in the agreement, it is 2 to 1. Suppose ratio is not given, then the 5 lakh will be shared equally, 1.66 like that, that is a way. So these things have to be shown clearly in a P&L appropriation account. So friends, I hope you have understood how to prepare a P&L appropriation account. Now we will see an example how to prepare a P&L appropriation account, okay. Let's take the question like this. This will be the question, okay. Net profit is equal to 3 lakh 40,000 for a particular year. Salary as per deed. As per deed means it is allowed as per the partnership deed. Suppose there are two partners only A, B. 10,000 per month, 5,000 per month. Interest on capital at the rate of 10%. All these are given in the question. So we need what is the capital of A? Capital of A is 1 lakh and B is 80,000. Interest on drawings. For A, it is 2,000 rupees. The amount itself is given in the problem B, 3,000. All these informations are given. Profit sharing ratio, suppose it is equal. All these are the informations given. With this, you have to prepare the P&L appropriation account. Okay. So, you write profit and loss appropriation account. First, what we should do? Start with the profit, that is credit side you put by net profit, 3,40,000. As per deed, salary payable to A is 10,000 per month, P 5,000 per month. So you have to multiply by 12 to get the total salary. So two partners salary, A 120,000, 10,000 a month. So one year, 120, B 60,000. 5,000 into 12, therefore 1 lakh 60,000. Interest on capital is also allowed as per the deed. So to A how much, B how much? It is 10% on the capital. A's capital is 1 lakh, so it will be 10,000. 1 lakh into 10%. Then for B, 80,000 into 10% is 8,000. So that is 18,000 rupees. Interest on drawing is allowed as per the deed. Therefore, we have to credit the P&L appropriation account by interest on drawings A 2000 
B three thousand total five thousand. Any mention about transport reserve? No, nothing is given in the problem. Now what we should do? On the credit side, the total is three lakh forty five thousand. Out of three lakh forty five thousand. 160 sorry 180 not 160 it is 180 is paid to the partner salary 18000 is paid as interest on capital so 345 minus 198 how much it will be it will be 147 total 345 Minus one eighty for salary, eighteen for interest on capital. I think the balance will be one forty seven. This one forty seven should be shared between A and B equally. So you write two partners capital A B equally. So one forty seven by two will be how much? I think it is seventy three five hundred. So yes, share of profit will be seventy three five hundred. B share of profit will be seventy three five hundred. So very simple problem. You see, friends, start with the net profit, salary, debit, appropriation account one twenty plus sixty one eighty, interest on capital ten plus eight eighteen thousand. Drawing interest credit, so find the total. See the difference. The difference will be the profit share available to the partners, which is to be divided equally between the partners. It comes to seventy three five hundred each. So very simple example. Hope it is clear, friends. Let's go to the next one. Now we will learn how to prepare the capital accounts of the partners. You know, in a partnership, capital accounts can be prepared by two different methods: fixed capital method and fluctuating capital method. Which method should be followed? The choice is left with the partners. They can either follow fixed capital method or fluctuating capital method. Choice is with the partners. Suppose a partnership has decided to follow fixed capital method. How to do that? So, when a firm wants to follow fixed capital method, they have to prepare two accounts. One is partners capital account. the other one is partners current account see in the partners capital account we will record only the movement relating to capital in the current account all other adjustments relating to the partner will be accounted so we start with the capital contributed by the partner by bank or the opening balance suppose it is a subsequent year so whatever the capital that is contributed by the partner at the time of joining the firm that will be shown in the capital account this is the capital introduced suppose any additional capital is introduced over and above that 1 lakh 
Later, they introduce another 50,000 rupees. Again, it will be credited to capital account by bank. Additional capital. If any amount is drawn out of capital, not out of profit, drawings can be 1 out of capital or 2 out of profit. If the capital is withdrawn and you follow fixed capital method, you have to debit the partner's capital account. But when you draw the profit, a yeah, part of the profit you are drawing as an entitlement, we should not record in capital account, we should record in current account. So therefore, to bank or cash drawings out of capital, suppose, 20,000 of capital is drawn. So, if you follow fixed capital method, two accounts will be prepared. One is partner's capital, one is partner's current account. In the capital account, the movement of capital only shall be recorded. Opening capital of 1 lakh, additional capital of 50. Suppose if any amount is drawn out of capital, that will be debited to capital account. Therefore, at the end of this year, you have to find what is the closing capital. So, total is 150. Out of 150, 20 is drawn. Therefore, the balance at the end of the year will be 130, which will be the Opening balance for the next year by balance brought down 1,30,000. So, in the capital account, we will record only opening capital, additional capital, drawings out of capital. Opening capital, additional capital is credited, drawings out of capital is debited, you find the closing balance of capital. Then what about the profit share, what about the salary, what about the interest on capital, what about the share of profit, what about the interest on drawings, what about drawings out of profit. All these things relating to the partner will be recorded in the partner's current account. So we start with the opening balance, buy balance in current account. Any salary given to partner will be credited. Interest on capital will be credited. Share of profit from P&L appropriation account that also will be credited. On the other side, if the partner is drawn Out of profit, out of profit means what? Out of profit salary is given, out of profit interest on capital is given, out of profit share of profit is given. So out of this, suppose a partner has drawn money, then that will go to partner's current account as drawings out of profit. Then if any interest on drawings is there, that also will be debited to the partner's current account. Then at the end of the year, you have to find out what is the closing balance. So if fixed capital method is followed, two accounts to be open, one for partner's capital, the other one for current. In the capital account, only the movement of capital will be recorded in the current account, we will record everything else, salary, interest on capital, share of profit, drawings out of profit, interest on drawings, then finally, you will find the closing balance of the current account. So for each partner, we have to prepare capital account, current account, X capital account, X current account, Y capital account, 
why current account like that we have to prepare and this will be the opening balance for the next period by balance brought down that is why this method is called <coughs> fixed capital why generally the capital is fixed it will have only the opening capital only when there is any additional capital or drawing sort of capital it will be adjusted otherwise it will be with the opening balance opening closing balance will be normally same if the firm follows fixed capital method on the contrary suppose a firm wants to follow fluctuating capital method then only one account will be prepared for every partner the name of that account is called partners capital partners capital account only one account in this account you will record everything relating to the partner opening balance salary interest on capital additional capital profit share everything will be recorded similarly on the debit side drawings both out of capital and out of profit all the drawings will be put in the capital account interest on drawings so all the amounts relating to the particular partner will be put in the capital account opening balance salary interest on capital additional capital profit share interest on drawing drawing all the drawings see in the fixed method drawings will be divided into two categories drawings out of capital which will be put in the capital account drawings out of profit will be put in the current account whereas when you prepare the fluctuating method then all the drawings is it out of capital or profit we do not know we we'll just put everything as a debit in the partners capital account then finally we will find the closing balance so whether a firm wants to maintain capital account of partner either under fixed or fluctuating it is left to the discretion of the partners both same only only that in the place of fixed capital two accounts the place of fluctuating only one account if you add the total of the balance of capital and current account that will be equal to the balance shown in the capital account but which method is preferable two methods are there choice is yours which method is preferable is it fixed or fluctuating it would be advisable to follow fixed capital method you know why because there will be clarity, there will be clear idea about what is your capital, what is your current account. So current account shows you how much of money you can draw from the business. Normally nobody is allowed to draw the capital because you started a business with a capital. If you draw the capital what will happen? You have to close the business. Without capital there is no business. So, when you prepare the capital account under fixed capital method, you will know what is the amount of capital put in by you that should be kept constant, that should not be altered at all. You cannot withdraw that. But you will have a separate account for current account that will tell you what is your salary, what is your interest on capital, what is your profit share, what is the opening balance. So, to that extent, you can draw because it is all return out of your business you can draw that but if you have only one account the name of capital account and a fluctuating method then everything is put in one account then it becomes very confusing how much can be drawn is not very clear so therefore if an option is given to you, you should always choose whichever gives you the better value fluctuating method is confusing maybe easy because only one account you have to prepare may be less time consuming but it is not good in the interest of the business and of course in the interest of the partners so therefore it is advisable to follow fixed capital method 
where capital is recorded separately, all other things are recorded separately, clarity will be there, how much of money you are entitled to withdraw, everything can be clearly seen under the fixed capital method. Anyway, in the examination what we have to do? Examination we have to do what the question asks. The question asks you to prepare capital and current account, that means you have to follow fixed capital method. They ask you to follow fluctuating method, you prepare only one capital account. So the problem will tell you which method you have to follow, you have to follow that. But if an option is given to you, the day when you become a chartered accountant, your client is asking you, sir, which method I should follow? Should I follow fixed or fluctuating? I would suggest you advise them to follow fixed capital method because that will be in their good interest and the interest of the business. Okay. Now, we are going to see specifically how to calculate interest on capital. So far, what we have done is we have recorded that in the appropriation account and so on. Now, we want to calculate interest on capital. How to calculate interest on capital? Very simple. Interest on capital is equal to capital into rate into number of months by 12. The capital amount is given to you, rate is given to you. We have to see for how many months the capital was retained in the business divided by 12. Suppose you want to calculate it in terms of number of days, then put in the numerator number of days divided by 365. Simple formula, how do you calculate simple interest? Principal, rate, number of years, here also same, principal is the opening capital, rate given in the question, Number of months we have to calculate from when to when the capital was retained in the business. Divide by 12, you will get the interest on capital. Very, very easy. So, for example, I want you to calculate interest on capital of Mr. X. Mr. X. Opening capital that is on 1420. 5 lakhs. Additional capital introduced on 1st November 20. Suppose it is 50,000 rupees. Drawings out of capital on 1st February 21. 20,000 rupees. Rate is 12 percent per annum. You have to calculate the interest on capital. So, three transactions. Opening balance is there. During their additional capital is there and some drawings are there. Drawings is what? Deduction from capital. Actual capital is addition to capital. So, how do you calculate interest on capital in this case? So, let us calculate the interest on capital now. Very simple. The opening capital is 5 lakh on 1-4-2020. That means we have to prepare accounts up to 31st March 21. Is it not? If opening date is 1st April, closing date is what? 31st March of next year. So, on opening capital, what is the amount? 5 lakh into 12 percent into 12 by 12 because it is there for one full year. 12 by 12, how much? 60,000. 
on additions. 50,000 is addition, rate is 12 percent for how many months from November to March. So, November, December, January, February, March, 5 months, 50,000 is held for 5 months. So, 50,000 into 12 percent into 5 by 12 will be how much? 2,500. Additional capital interest will increase 2500. Then drawings. When you draw money, it will be a reduction from capital. So you put minus 20,000 or you put within bracket into 12 percent. For how many months? February you have drawn the money. February, March, two months, it will be. 2 by 12. So, 20,000 into 2 by 12, how much it will be? Into 2 times it will be 400 rupees, it is minus. So, 60,000 is the interest for the opening capital, 2 5 interest for additions on 1st November. Whereas minus 400 for the drawings made on 1st February. So, find the total that will be the total interest on capital which is equal to how much? 62,100. Is it not so simple friends? How easy calculation? Capital into rate into number of months by 12. For opening balance it is there for one full year. For addition it is there only for 5 months. For drawing it is 2 months only, so therefore it is so simple to calculate. Now interest on capital can be calculated by another method also known as product method. Another way of calculating interest on capital product method. You see in this problem 12 percent is multiplied every time divide by 12 is done every time. So, which is varying? The amount varies, number of months varies. So, this 12 percent and divide by 12 is constant, we can take it outside. So, in product method what we do is, we multiply the amount by number of months, then find the total of the product, on that you apply the percentage and divide by 12 will get the answer. So, on opening capital, what is the amount? 5 lakhs. How many months? This is the amount. How many months? April to March, 12 months. So, what is the product? Product is amount into months. That will be 60 lakhs. Then additional capital of 50,000, how many months, 5 months, multiply, you will get 2,50,000, drawing says 20, so you put minus 20,000, how many months, 2 months, so you put minus 40,000. Therefore, what is the total of the product? 62,50,000 minus 40 will be 62,10,000. That is the sum of the product. If this is the sum of the product, how to calculate the interest? So, therefore, interest on capital is equal to 62,10,000 into 12 percent into 1 by 12. To calculate it correctly, the answer will be rupees 62,100. So friends, you can see, I have determined interest capital by two different methods, on individual amounts 
on the product i am getting the same answer so therefore you can calculate interest capital by any method on each amount individually or on the product totally that is a way we can calculate the interest on capital there is one more way in which you can calculate interest on capital i'll tell you that also see what is the opening balance 5 lakhs so on 1st april it is 5 lakh on 1st november you put 50000 so what happened on 1st november it came 5 lakh 50 so the 5 lakh was there from april to october like that also product method can be followed you understand the opening balance was 1 5 lakh on 1st november you have introduced 50000 therefore it became 5 lakh 50 on 1st november so from april to october the capital was 5 lakh only that is for a period of how many months you tell me april to october that will be 7 months so now you multiply that by 7 get the product as 35 lakhs then the capital became 5 lakh 50 on 1st november up to 1st february that is for how many months november december january for 3 months the capital was 5 lakh 50000 so 5 lakh 50000 for a period of 3 months will be 16 lakh 50000 now what happened it has now reduced by 20 on 1st february they have drawn 20000 so now the cap has become 5 lakh 30 for 2 months that is february and march so 5 lakh 30 multiply by 2 months february march that is equal to 10 lakh 60000 if you find the total that will also be same as what we did earlier it will be 62 lakh 10000 just check whether you are getting the same number 35 plus 16 51 plus 10 61 plus 50 62 lakh 10000 so product method can be done by two different ways 5 lakh for two full 12 months 50000 for 5 months 20 for 2 months that is one way you will get the product as total as 62 lakh 10 to other way for how many months the capital was 5 lakh from april to october it was 5 lakh 7 months product 35 lakhs first november it became 5 lakh 50 for how many months november december january so 5 lakh 50 into 3 months 16 lakh 50 because on first february they have drawn 20 so capital reduce it will become 5 lakh 30 so it was 5 lakh 30 for how many months 2 months february and march that is multiply 10 lakh 60 still you are getting the same sum of the product as 62 lakh 10000 therefore what is interest on capital 62 lakh 10000 into 12% into 1 by 12 will get the same answer 62100 so there are three different ways of calculating interest on capital individually then add everything or find the product then find the sum of product on the apply the rate or the third method is also product method for how many months that capital was there you multiply get the sum of product that way also we can find the interest so whichever method you follow are you able to see the answer is 62100 only this is the way we have to calculate interest on capital for every partner i have just taken the example of one partner like that suppose five partners are there for each partner you have to find out what is opening capital what is additional capital drawings of capital based on that you follow any one of these methods because any method you follow you'll get the same answer you can follow any other methods to get the interest on capital but i would suggest you better follow the product method either this method or that method whichever is comfortable for you whichever you have clearly understood 
I would suggest you better follow the product method to calculate interest on capitals. I hope everything was clear and you will be able to understand it thoroughly and you get a problem on this. Based on this, you will be able to do it in the exam. Of course, you will be doing problems on this afterwards also that will give you more understanding about how to apply what all we learned in this chapter.